Hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Tacopolis 2. In between episodes, I have cleaned up the middle parts of all of these buildings because we don't need to have power there anymore because we now have flux points and we can just have power somewhere downstairs. And for the moment, I set up temporary lapidary dynamos right here. I have four of them total and another place for four more if we need to, but currently we're only using a full one and a half-ish. And these just run at 10% because that's how dynamos work. And uh, that is currently our power. Everything is going into the flux cell and we are just draining it into the flux plug. And that is sending it to all of the flux points around the base. And we are still over producing the lapis. We're not really using more than we're making because I upgraded this pulverizer with just the reinforced integral components. But each time you process a lapis, you get 12. And we don't burn 12 each time we burn or we process one lapis. So we just basically get a net gain of lapis and it's an infinite resource anyway. So that is super nice for our temporary power solution. And to get us started in today's episode, we are gonna learn how to craft uranium ore and we need to do the whole prospector pick again. And the uranium ore can be pulverized. So I have a 28 extra. So we're just gonna toss that in here to get processed. And the 36, we're gonna set up with the miner we need a tier eight support frame. And I totally forgot, I already prepared the tier eights for prime. So we have a little bit of an extra, but that's perfectly fine. Toss down the miner, I already made a uranium colored drawer, lock and quantify and add it to our network. I added uranium or processing. So we are now getting uranium ingots as we speak. And now we have this entire room filled up, which is super cool. And it's kind of super empty in the middle. So we have space for whatever we want to throw in there if we want to hide something out of plain sight and just have it run in the background. With four uranium blocks, we can unlock the power mod and we get ourselves a manual. The next thing that we need to craft is the dielectric paste. We can use lava buckets or blaze powder. I think I'm gonna go for lava buckets because we have a whole bunch of fluid cells filled with lava from our power generation that we just tore down. So basically we're gonna get a sequential fabricator and we're gonna use that to craft ourselves a bunch of dielectric paste. And I think we need the dielectric paste for the technium, do we not? The basic crafting component for power is dielectric paste. There's two options of how we can craft it. One is with blaze powder, which is slightly more annoying to get because we need to pulverize redstone flux coils and you get one for one, which is just a little bit annoying. So we're just gonna use lava because we have a bunch of fluid cells filled with lava from when we set up our, the first item that we need to auto craft for power and also for ultimate technique ingots is the electric paste. So if I click this, this should start crafting. Yep, it pulls clay and coal and it should start making us the electric paste. Auto input. Oh, I need to set up this guy as an output. There we go, haha. -ha. The electric paste, we're getting it. And please tell me, how do you like this color coding setup where we have the lava on top, the clay on the side, the coal on the side and the dielectric paste on the bottom? I think it looks pretty cool. And we can kind of do the same thing for everything over here. We can put, for example, gold here on the side and go silver on the other and then electrum on the bottom. And we can do kind of like a triple split way or maybe we split up that in the middle and it's kind of like gold. I have to figure it out. Where we have three items, it's gonna be looking the best because we can do the same thing that we did here. One item on the top, one item on the side, and the other over there, and the product on the bottom. I think that'll look cool. But for other things like this, it might be a bit weird of how we wanna set it up, but we'll figure it out as we go. And we already have 2048 of the electric paste. I'm gonna grab a couple stacks here because I think we need to put it in the four corners over here for making ultimate technium. So we're just gonna prepare that. And we actually just need uranium plates, right? Let's take four stacks and toss them in here. I think it's uranium sheet metal, right? Yeah. In the meantime, while we wait, let's craft some iron bars and then we can do a stack of these rods and a stack of these rods. We can turn that into dielectric casing. We are also gonna need a bunch of these basic capacitors. And then we can make ourselves an energizing rod starter and also an energizing orb. And what I think we do is we place this down and then we place the energizing rod where we have some power. So I think I can just toss it like this and give it power like so. 
I don't know if it's uh, close enough or if it's far enough, but it says you put uranium ingots inside of here. Yep, there it goes. And it's gonna slowly but surely make us a new item. Huzzah! We now have uraninite. With four uraninite, we can craft ourselves the reactor starter, which is the last item in the quest line. Our uranium sheet metal is now ready, and we can toss it in here, like that, and it's gonna make us 32 ultimate technium ingots. Quest complete. Let's unlock a bunch of research papers, shall we? Firstly, we're gonna unlock various new crafting recipes for nether items, which I believe we unlock here. And now we can make glowstone, which is lava bottles and blocks of redstone. We can also make netherrack, which is stone and lava bottles. Next is the big decision. Do we go with applied energistics or refined storage? And I have heard that refined storage has a few bugs late game, so I think we're gonna go with applied energistics. Plus, I kind of like applied energistics more, even though refined storage is a little bit more convenient because you don't have to deal with channels, but uh, we're gonna unlock this for the moment. Nice, and we get a mysterious cube. Can I craft this? Please tell me I can craft this. Cube, mysterious cube. Oh, I can craft them, but uh, later, I guess. First one we have to buy. When broken, we'll drop all the applied energistics presses. Oh. Is there a recipe for the press? I mean, there's a recipe for the ins Yeah, we can just craft stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's eight tech bucks. Yeah, we're, we're just gonna buy it. it. It's eight tech bucks. Less work. Huzzah, there we go. All the presses, nice. Let's also unlock villager trading and ender chests. We can also unlock a next recipe for crafting tech bucks, which should be in the remaining research. Yep, do we have 16 more tech bucks? We do have not. Now we do. There you go. And this will require the ultimate technium. Yeah, and it makes 10 tech bucks. Awesome. Let's craft ourselves a bunch of glowstone and also a bunch of netherrack. We're gonna set up the glowstone right here next to the obsidian. With the nether crafting, we also unlocked soul sand crafting, so we can use just some sand and lava bottles to make some soul sand. And with netherrack, we can unlock the ancient debris crafting recipe. And we can also put that in the miner, which is what I planned for. I just assume, oh, does it do prospector pick thing? No. Do I get a, ah, I get a crafting recipe for netherite shards. Gotcha, with nether bricks. Okay. And then we can do netherite scrap. Firstly, we need to put another brick in our inventory. There we go. We can also craft ourselves a bunch of basalt, which we need to craft the ancient debris. And I need to make 36 of this if we want to set it up in the miner. I have crafted 36 ancient debris and we can toss a drawer here on top. And now we have an infinite supply of ancient debris. If we take a stack of ancient debris with some cinnabar, we're going to get a whole bunch of netherite scrap. Looks like it's making two every time. Oh, I guess the cinnabar doesn't really help. Oh yeah, there's no recipe, there's no cinnabar boosting for this. Okay, that's fine. And a cool thing that somebody in the comments suggested, you see how the power is raining super fast? Just toss in a flux capacitor, and then it has one and a half million RF to go down with. So that's super cool. So you can speed up thermal machines super quickly by just doing this. And now we're gonna toss in some gold and some netherite scrap, and that's gonna make some netherite ingots. And netherite ingots are used to make the tier 9 support frames, so we can now automatically harvest up some netherrack. The quest book wants us to craft a block of netherite, and then a tier 9 support frame completes the chapter. Another thing that we can now buy is for 12 tech bucks, we can get 36 nether quartz ore, and I'm assuming this also requires the tier... No, oh, just tier 7. Okay. I don't know when I, I unlock this, but at least we can set up a miner for it now. To get us started with applied energistics, we need to toss some polished basalt in the enriching factory, and that is gonna turn it into some skystone. We can then just smelt the skystone into skystone blocks, and those are used to make the applied energistics controller. 
A big part of applied energistics is Certus Quartz Crystals. In this pack, we can just turn Nether Quartz directly into Certus Quartz Crystals. Generally, you would have to grow Certus Quartz Seeds, or they have changed it with Certus Quartz Growth with, like, Certus Quartz Clusters, and you can get a budding Certus Quartz Crystal, and you can't in this pack, but we can just craft them, like so. So that's super easy, and I kind of just used all my Nether Quartz, which <laughs> isn't really great. Um, hello, Quartz, speedy up, please. We're gonna need some slime balls, which have a recipe with wines. So I'm glad I set up a jungle tree way back when, so we can now uh, use this to make sticky pistons. And I'm gonna make a total of six, so we can make three inscribers. Actually, we need four. We're also gonna make ourselves a charger. To start automating applied energistics, we're gonna need to get a little bit more creative because we can't just auto input and auto output into the inscriber from a drawer per se. So we are gonna dive into some laser IO, which requires these raw logic chips that we can toss in the redstone furnace to get cooked up. We then craft ourselves some laser connectors that we can then turn into laser nodes. Before we start automating the inscribers, we're gonna need a bunch of silicon, and that is made with just some quartz smelted and not blocks of quartz. Can you grab regular quartz, please? No, stop, stop it, quartz, please. There you go. All right, silicon, go into the drawer down below, please. Thank you very much. I decided to use Xnet instead of Laser IO because it's just more convenient and easier to set up and it's faster because Laser IO only processes one operation at a time so it can't transfer power and items in the same block at the same time pretty much unless you upgrade it. So Xnet is just going to be the mod of choice. And the way this works is in the controller, we can specify channels of what they do. The green ones are item, the yellow one is power. So we're extracting power out of this flux point and inserting it into all of these inscribers. And then we're extracting out of this drawer up top some silicon and inserting it into all of the inscribers. And then we just extract out of the inscribers and insert into the drawer down below. So we have three inscribers processing us silicon. And the reason I have three is because these silicon bits are used for engineering processors, calculation processors, and logic processors. I decided to automate the creation of all of the processors before we made anything really with applied energistics. So in the back here, we have an Xnet controller and a whole bunch of extracts and inserts. And I'm not really going to go into too much detail of how this works, but if you want an explanation, you can write down in the comments and maybe I'll make a special video or something. The last item that we need is Fluix Crystals. They are gotten with in-world transformation. You toss some charred Certus Quartz and Redstone and Nether Quartz into some water and it transforms it into Fluix Crystals. The annoying part about this is if you have a magnet, you have to turn it off and then you can toss the items into water and it works like right there on the edge. If we hit it in the water, it's going to make us the fluid crystals. Lovely. And you might be wondering how you get charred Certus Quartz. There is a block called a charger where you just input one Certus Quartz crystal and it turns it into a charge Certus Quartz crystal. So I did that on the same Xnet line here and in the same controller as well. Now that we have everything ready, we can start crafting applied energistics stuff. So we're gonna grab a bunch of controllers. I think I'm gonna need more sky stone. I decided to put the Emmy controller right up here because we can put a little glass layer here so we can actually see what's going on. And we're gonna run all the wiring through this guy and through this layer over here. And then we can put another layer of machines on top eventually. Because I chose Applied Energistics, that means we need to go into the whole dense cable, smart cable fiasco, where each face of the Emmy controller can do 32 channels that you can transfer on a dense smart cable. And instead of having dense smart cables going everywhere around the base and then little smart cables that can do eight channels going to different machines, we can use P2P tunnels, which means that we can transfer on a single dense cable 32 times 32 channels, pretty much. And to understand how this works, if we take a memory card and we shift right click it or right click it, yeah, there we go, to this P2P tunnel, and then we right click it over here, we copy the same color frequency, right? 
So what we can then do is we have 32 channels available right here. So we can take a dense smart cable and we can go wherever we want to go. And for example, if we do another P2P tunnel right here, and if we clear this table and then we do another one, we can then do another P2P tunnel like this. Oh, forget, sneak right click to copy and then right click to paste. So basically that one is now linked to here and we can then have another 32 channels going to a different part of the base. So what we can do is each one of these machines is going to require, for example, one, two, three, four channels, right? So we can do a 32 channel on that side, 32 channel on that side, and so forth and so forth along the base, depending on how many channels we need at each machine. Applied energistic storage cells work a little bit different than refined storage. Refined storage just has a certain amount of items the cell can have, and it doesn't matter what type of item is, how many types of that items are, it doesn't matter. You just can store that many of any item. Applied energistics is a little bit more finicky in a sense that we can store 63 different types of items and 262,000 bytes of those items on one storage cell. So if we have a lot of different items, we're gonna fill up stored, the storage cells very quickly, but you have a lot of one item, you're gonna fill up the storage cell slowly, if that makes sense. So I think we're ready to try and transform our simple storage network into Applied Energistics. We just have to hook this into this. And I'm thinking we can just run a dense cable kind of like down here somewhere. We can just go down because we're going to need the dense cable downstairs anyway. So we're just going to go behind here and we're going to see if we can get it all the way down and hooked in with a P2P tunnel to our storage system. We're going to do a P2P tunnel right over here on the blue line. And then we're going to sneak right click this, get a new channel going and head up top here. And let's say we're going to use this bottom one right here and we can hook it in and we should see everything online. So we can now start dumping items in the storage system as we need to. So we can just clear our inventory and then we're going to go clear out the chests as well. A simple solution that we can do is we can craft an import bus probably from over here still. We're going to get an import bus and then I do have acceleration cards which can go into the import and export bus. And then we can grab some cardboard boxes, which I made off camera. These are made with some sawdust, which you can get by just tossing in the pulverizer, just some logs and you get eight per log. And these guys are really cool. You can just right click them on entities and then you break them like so. I could even vein mine them. There we go. And what we can then do is come over here. And where can we put this? Let's do here and we'll just grab some cable. This one doesn't matter. We're going to go like this. We're going to put the import bus here and then we're going to give it some acceleration cards and then we can do this and it should just empty everything into the system. It has completed and we have filled in three stored cells on types and one almost full on types, but you can see the bytes are not a problem. We're only like at half capacity, so that's totally fine. And we have three still left over, so that's plenty of storage space for whatever else we need. So it's time for the big thing. I have to get rid of all of the simple storage cabling, so we're just gonna get rid of it and we're gonna replace it with applied energistics and get everything hooked back up again. I decided to clean up the base a little bit. As you can see here, we no longer have torches. We have some fancy glowstone lanterns and I think it looks really, really cool. That's kind of the idea that I had from the get go and why I built the miners the way I did. I also hooked up everything via P2P tunnels to some storage buses. So we have everything inside of the system now and we can see all of our blocks and start crafting with them pretty much. And then down here, you can see we no longer have the tree farm. The tree farm is up here. I moved it up so I could run a cable here and set up just a storage bus down here. And we also increased the size of the items in the drawer. So it's just filling up on spruce logs in this slot. And then eventually it's going to fill up this slot, I hope as well. If not, I think 50,000 spruce logs is plenty for what we need. Then over here, I set up four fluid absorbers with some lava. And these are also hooked up via storage bus to apply energistics. 
And in previous versions of Applied Energistics, you had a fluid storage bus. And I was looking for that. I was like, Applied Energistics doesn't support fluids. It does. It's just the regular storage bus. If you partition the storage, if we clear this, it's going to show up lava. And then you don't also have a fluid grid and gas grid and whatever they had before. If I just search for lava, it's stored in here. We have 1024 buckets because we have four fluid cells. For our power solution for the moment, we are using lapidary dynamos and a couple power cells so we can actually see how much power we're draining. This is producing 1920 RF per tick, which are these four lapidary dynamos. And then over here, we're not really draining that much. We're draining one and a little bit. So it's um, still a little bit of excess power. So we aren't going to run out very soon, but we're going to go into some power and set up a proper super duper, super powerful power generation. So we never ever have to worry about power supply. I really like this sort of setup where we can have the stone halfway and then the smooth stone on the bottom. And I figured out a solution of how it is going to work and process everything because we can't have a level emitter right over here. Let's say the same way we have it over here. Basically, we just have the level emitter facing into the framed block and the framed block does transmit redstone. So this works and it's super easy to do. And we can go around all the places and we can kind of transform everything into this type of deal or actually this type of deal. We could do the halfway coal ore and then halfway the other thing. The only thing that this would run into an issue is with the drawer to store gravel and sulfur. But I guess we could put an auxiliary cactus into here. This destroys excess outputs. So we could just say have this and it's just going to keep a stack of gravel and sulfur in here and just destroy the excess. That could be an idea. Yeah, it is going to work. We can just have this like this and then the gravel and the sulfur and everything should just get voided and destroyed. The redstone we're producing cinnabar and I don't know if we're going to use cinnabar for every for anything really. It's a cool modifier, but I don't think we need to process any ores with cinnabar because we have an infinite supply of ores, which through time is going to get us an infinite supply of that resource. So we can just upgrade the machine instead of upgrading it with a catalyst. I started on this left side and got work. I started on this left side of the base and got to work to converting everything to be half and half. So we have coal already set up, lapis, redstone and niter. On this side, I decided to just simplify the emerald and diamond processing to have it look super nice the same way we have all of the machines over here. So we're just using a pulverizer, no longer the induction smelter with the red slag. It really isn't worth it. We're getting a infinite supply of diamond ore. So in turn, we're going to get an infinite supply of diamonds, albeit a little bit slower because the pulverizer is going to produce less per ore, but it really doesn't matter. We have 64,000. I don't think we're ever going to run out. Over here, then we have the ender pearls, then the nether quartz. And I decided to move the silicon processing into its own slot so we can have nether quartz converted into silicon. And then here we have a little bit of a mess still. I decided to set up nether bricks for some reason, and we don't really need nether bricks, so I just tore it down. As far as the treated wood is concerned, I think we can set this up inside of the applied energistic system directly, because these are basically just two crafting recipes. If we have creosote oil accessible by a storage bus to the system, we can just use molecular assemblers and interfaces to auto craft it for us. But we're not there yet, so we're just going to leave this here for the moment. And if we set it up inside of the applied energistic system, we can sort it out then. As far as the making of creosote oil is concerned, we can't have the pyrolyzer set up in, in a nice half and half system if we want to have the creosote oil extracted into a fluid cell or something on the side. So what I'm thinking is we can just use Xnet here in the back and we can store it in the fluid cell, maybe here on top or on the bottom, probably on the bottom because it's making two processes, right? So let's take the fluid cell that we have in here somewhere. This guy, we can put this guy right here and we can set the back to be in and out. And then we can do an Xnet thingy on the back. 
What we're gonna do with XNet is basically just transfer power and fluids inside of the same block. The items can be taken care of by the machine itself. It's super easy to do. We can just have an input and an output. So as far as the power is concerned, we extract the power from the flux point and we insert into the machine and the controller so this guy can keep on processing. And as far as fluids are concerned, we just extract out of the pyrolyzer and then we insert with a priority of one into the fluid cell and with a priority of zero into the fluid trash can. So the rest of the creosote that we get gets voided and the fluid cell stays full all the time. And here we have an expert bus on the top and two storage buses on the bottom. And then here in the middle, we have the level emitter right back there. You can't really see it, it's behind this block, there it is. And basically we can just cover everything up. So you can put a coal facade here and then these two facades over here and it's looking nice and neat. I started working on changing all of our alloy processors to be kind of like split the same way we have these split, but these are very simple to do. These are a little bit more complicated. The ones that have two inputs, I can get away with using just applied energistics because we can power everything from the back and we can use the drawer controller here with some trim going down to the framed drawer. And then we have power in the back. We control the redstone through the block here on the top, which powers this induction smelter. And then the export bus is just exporting into the drawer controller, which sees the drawer down here and down here because all of this is trim. This one, on the other hand, is a little bit more complicated. We need to use XNet because we need to transfer power and also redstone control in one single block or cable, and we can't do it with applied energistics because these framed blocks have to be framed blocks and everything else is drawers. So basically, in the back, we kind of have the same deal. We have a frame trim and frame trim, and then just trim going down to the drawer here and down to the drawer here on this side. And then in the back, we have just two XNet connectors. This is providing power to the controller and to the machine. And then here we have a redstone channel and we have a sensor for sensing when we're less or equal to 10,000 signal ingots. And we can actually set it to just less. It doesn't have to be less than equal. And if it happens to be less than 10,000, it outputs an orange color redstone signal. And here we just have a set, uh, an output that works on orange and it's gonna emit a redstone signal of 15. And this guy is then gonna start working if we run out of signalum or if we run out of 10,000 of signalum. And I can do that and you can see it's gonna start running and we can even, for example, just toss in, let's say this much. There, you will see it turn off. It's gonna get 10,000. And I think now it's gonna process one more and then turn off. Yeah, it already has a signal of zero, as you can see here on the right. So it's going to process one more and then it is done. Nice. I am really liking how this is turning out, but we sadly won't have time today to tackle all of the other alloys and also our ore processing. So I'm thinking I'm going to do a live stream tomorrow morning. Today is Wednesday afternoon, so Thursday morning, probably 8 a.m. ish. I will try and stream and see if we can get a whole bunch of this transformed and possibly fix up all of this. These are looking really neat and really cool and we can get it sorted and nicely, neatly organized. But sadly, that's gonna do it for today. So I wanna thank you all so much for watching. I am really hoping you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. You can also subscribe to get notified when new videos go live and you can support me on Patreon as well if you want. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a good one. Bye-bye.